Welcome to Faith and Science. I'm Dr. John Ashton. Just recently on the uh, news, I heard um, that uh, in the United States, for example, certain um, uh, banks were uh, withdrawing uh, credit or closing uh, accounts of uh, Christian organisations. Um, and there certainly seems to be a, uh, a rise uh, against, uh, for example, and some places I've, I've heard um, in, increase uh, um, restrictions on reading the Bible in, in public places and, and this sort of thing, which is very worrying. And I think one of the reasons that we have this increase is that, again, people have become so inculcated with the idea that we evolved um, rather than be created by a supreme being that they're, uh, again, you know, totally um, beginning to ignore the, the Bible. There's this view that science has, has disproved the, the Bible. And to me, this is just so sad because... When we look at the discoveries that we're making in the area of science, particularly in the area of biology, the evidence that we were created um, by an amazing superintelligence is just in increasing daily. And there are many things that we just take for granted that are powerful evidence for this creator. One of the ones that uh, came to my uh, attention just recently, talking to a, um, a friend uh, who's a, a medical practitioner about the amazing functions of our kidneys. Uh, a, a, another friend uh, was uh, you know, talking about how he is actually surviving with just half a kidney. Um, he had to have... Uh, uh, the others removed for for medical reasons, but there's, he's got half a kidney, but yet he can still live and and survive. And this is especially remarkable because of the the functions of these uh, little organs. Now we when we talk about you know the kidneys, they're just a, a you know a small. Uh, we have two of them, of course. There's these two small organs in our body. And, um, you know, most mammals have them, birds have them, reptiles have them. Of course, they're, they're slightly different and there's an evolutionary story that is told about these. But when we look, drill, drill down into the chemistry and structure of these um, small organs, it is absolutely amazing in design. So in, in us, in humans, the kidneys are these two reddish-brown sort of bean-shaped blood filtering organs. Um, they're about um, 12 uh, centimetres long um, in, in size and um, they receive uh, blood from the arteries and they, they purify the blood and uh, waste products are uh, excreted to a ureter that carries then the waste product in urine uh, to the bladder. But you know, the kidneys are involved in controlling uh, the volume of, of different body fluids, uh, the water-salt balance, um, the acid-base balance or the pH of our blood, um, they're in, they involved in various electrolyte concentrations in our body, uh, maintaining those and the removal of, of, of toxins from our body. It's just uh, amazing. Um, some of the substances as the blood circulates through um, are reabsorbed into um, solute-free water, so it's sort of purified water, and um, some substances are excreted, um, such as uh, ammonium and uh, potassium and uric acid. And um, there's tiny little units in our kidneys called nephrons, and I'll talk about those in detail another time, but uh, because they, these tiny 
little structures are so amazing in their own structure and yet each adult kidney contains about one million nephrons. A mouse kidney, for example, only contains about 12,500 nephrons but a human kidney contains a million of these special cells. And when you talk about a nephron, you know, it's N-E-P-H-R-O-N, it's just a similar... But when we look at, drill down and look at the structure of these, they are, it's like looking into another world of, of um, chemical engineering. And so I'll talk about those uh, separately. Let's have a look at just the... just want to talk about the main function of the kidneys. And um, the reason why I talk about this is that they're is incredible design and chemical engineering involved in the design and structure of the kidneys as well as the biochemistry is involved. And we need, as as I talk about these, we need to bear in mind that all these structures have to be encoded for in a genetic code that evolutionists believe arose by random chance blind mutations. And yet it's so complex and it works. And this is just one of our organs. And when we consider the complexity of the kidney, we realise it's absolutely impossible for this machine to have evolved. It's absolutely impossible for the codes that are responsible using the the chemical compounds that we represent by A, C, T and G that carry the information that is then read by a ribosome that then uh, assembles the proteins that make the structures uh, for this. Absolutely impossible for this amazing system to arise by chance. The the kidneys also convert uh, a precursor of vitamin D to its active form, uh, calcitriol, um, and they also synthesise special hormones um, such as uh, renin and um, erythropoietin. Um, so, of course, our kidneys are, in, um, are located fairly high, actually, in the abdominal ca- uh, cavity, one on each side. Now, because of the, the size of the liver, it uh, usually results in the right kidney being slightly lower and smaller um, to just to fit in than the uh, left kidney. And on top of each kidney is an adrenal gland and um, the kidney and the adrenal gland are are surrounded by two special layers of fat, uh, the perirenal fat um, and the renal, uh, which is present between the renal fascia and the renal capsule. And so you've got the, when you look at this little bean-shaped organ, when we look at the the concave border, um, or the inside uh, a bit, you've got the larger convex outer shape, um, and then the inner inner shape, and of course that's where the different arteries and veins and the ureta leave from that um, particular part. So from the inside part of the the bean shaped um, organ. Of course, there are a lot of uh, structures in the kidney itself. Now, I'll run through and list some of these uh, structures, but when we think about these structures, just remember that there has to be a specific code that encodes each of these structures so that they're just the, when they're made, they're just the right size, they just fit, and they just carry out their function. And so you've got within the, uh, the, the structure of the kidneys, you've got um, eight to 18 uh, cone-shaped, what we call re- renal lobes, uh, contain a, um, a portion um, that is called the renal pyramid. And between these uh, little renal pyramids are projections of, of uh, cortex called uh, renal columns. And um, then the tip of or uh, papilla of each pyramid empties urine into a minor uh, calyx and the minor calyxes empty into a major calyxes and the major calyxes empty into the renal pelvis when this becomes the ureter. 
And so when you think about it, these are these are just some of the structures that have to be fitted in that are part of the delivery system for the uh, different uh, fluids. And there's part of the uh, kidney where, again, you've got the, uh, the renal artery enters and the renal vein um, uh, exits. Um, and then you've got lymph nodes that surround these structures. And uh, then you've got special fat deposits called uh, the hilia fat. Uh, it's deposited in a cavity called the renal sinus. Uh, that which is the area that uh, contains the renal pelvises and the calyxes. So all these parts, all these components, remember, require a genetic code to make them just the right size so they all fit together and they work in harmony. They form this structure, which is part of this filtering system. Of course, the kidney uh, possesses no moving structures. It's... Um, it's a it's a sort of a, an, an amazing filter system. So the the kidneys receive their blood through the renal arteries, um, which come from the abdominal aorta, and um, they actually receive about twenty to twenty five percent of uh, the heart's blood output goes through the kidneys. So it's a fair bit of blood is being pumped through the kidneys at any time. And um, these arteries then that come in, they supply um, blood to interlobular arteries that supply blood to curate arteries. Um, and um, each artery then supplies several interlobulary arteries that then feed into what they're called afferent arterioles um, that then supply the glomerularly. So... When you think about it, this is an amazing structure that is involved in this film. So we've got all these components, again, that all have to be encoded for in the DNA. And, um, of course, blood veins through a whole lot of, again, specialist veins that um, was the blood is, uh, when it passes out after purification and cleansing. And, of course, there are nerve systems that supply that. Um, the kidney has its own nervous system uh, via the renal plexus. Um, and um, it gets inputs from the sympathetic nervous system uh, that triggers vasoconstriction, uh, reducing blood flow. Um, and it also has input from the parasympathetic nervous system um, via the vagus nerve. And where scientists are still trying to work out actually what the role of it, this is. And so we can see there's this complex nervous structure as well that controls the, the functions. Just like um, in a chemical engineering operation, you've got major control systems that open and close valves, regulate flow and all this sort of thing. The same thing is happening in the human kidney. And again, when we look in within the human kidney, there are at least 26 distinct cell types. And so you've got the um, uh, glomerulus uh, parietal cells, you've got the uh, glomerulus uh, podocyte cells, you've got the um, tubal uh, brush border cell. You've got the loop of pineal thin segment cells. You've got the thick ascending limb cell. You've got the kidney distal tube cell. You've got um, the collecting duct principal cells. You've got collecting duct intercalated, intercalated cell. You've got the interstitial uh, kidney cells. And so, again, these are just some of the 26 different types of cells. So... It's quite fascinating that in the human DNA, there's about 20,000 protein coding genes that are expressed in the different cells of our body, different ones. And almost 70% of these genes, or about 14,000 coding genes, are expressed in adult kidneys. And, and there are over 300 genes that are specifically expressed in the, in the kidney with 
50 genes just specific to the kidney. This is a massive amount of genetic information that's involved in coding for the structures that are in the, in the kidneys. And, um, of course, many of the proteins that are expressed in the cell membranes in the kidneys are, are transporter proteins. Um, and, again, all these different proteins that are expressed there, and we're looking, as I said, thousands of genes. These are massive. Well, these genes encode massive amounts of genetic information. And again, with the evolutionary model that says that these amazing coding systems arose by blind chance mutations, and yet they all work, they fit into a system, you know, um, that it, we can see is absolutely impossible. Um, you know, in my work, I get involved to look at different chemical engineering processes. Um, and, um, you know, I've been on the advisory board for uh, yeah, PhD uh, studies, uh, for example, for at large Australian universities, such as the University of New South Wales and also the University of Sydney. And the structures and the programming that's involved in chemical engineering processes, you know, requires a lot of design. And it has to be just right or it won't work. Um, or it you know has very low efficiency, um, or will break down, um, and yet our kidneys work amazingly efficiently and amazingly functional. And as I said, evolutionists have to believe that these amazing structures arose by blind chance mutations. And yet most chemical engineering plants involve a number of chemical engineers and draftsmen to work out just the design of the thing and then a whole team of engineers to, to construct them. The kidneys, of course, it, uh, may express a particularly prolific uh, protein, uh, uromodulin, uh, that's the most abundant protein in the urine, and that prevents calcification and the growth of bacteria um, in the urinary tracts. And again, what we find is that here we have specific chemical compounds that are synthesised that then play these different uh, protective roles. Now, uh, you know, one of the... Uh, we have a research project on... Um, uh, at, at the moment uh, where I work where, you know, we have specific uh, problems in um, a, a, a UHT treatment plant where, where we get sort of burn on of the, of the product on the interior lines of the, the tube going through the plant that is used to sterilise the, uh, the beverage. And um, it's a major problem. We've got, you know, um, teams, we've had you know, university teams looking at this at ways that we can slow down um, the, uh, the rate of burn, up, burn on on these tombs so that they don't have to be cleaned as uh, quickly because this is all at its cost, reduces our efficiency and, and so forth. And yet what we find in these living systems is that you know, there are these specific compounds that are being designed, again, to keep the system running smoothly and, and protect it. There are, there are amazing uh, proteins, you know, the uh, solute carrier protein, SLC228A, is expressed in some of the tubes. Um, another calbindin uh, protein and aquaporin-2. All these specific proteins that play function in the, the role and again, um, in another time, I'll, I'll talk about the, uh, the nephron, uh, this amazing countercurrent filter system that um, is in, in the kidneys. Um, many people will be familiar with the ocean spray cranberry juice. Well, this cranberry juice is produced by a countercurrent filter. Uh, filtering system that was uh, developed by um, a colleague, uh, Tim Lang, at a company, Tim Lang, uh, T uh, Lang Technologies, in conjunction with uh, CSIRO, the Commonwealth Industrial Scientific Organisation, the Australian government's main research organisation. And of course, the process has been patented, and that patented, and that was, you know, a collaborative research project to develop this countercurrent um, uh, separation system and. Um, uh, we have a, a, a prototype at this as well that we're looking at developing. Well, the kidneys use a countercurrent filtration system, separate to, to cleanse 
um, the the blood. Um, and as I said, it took a team of engineers, top scientists, to develop this one that is used by Ocean Spray, which is a patented system uh, for the cranberry juice. Um, and yet we expect and believe we're teaching our young people, we're teaching our children in school that evolution occurred, that these amazing structures like this in our kidneys evolved by chance, random, blind mutations. It's absolutely impossible. It points to an amazing super design, a super uh, amazing chemical engineer to design these things. So it's interesting that the, the kidneys excrete a variety of waste product, products produced by our metabolism and they excrete them into the urine um, used, uh, through this uh, nephron uh, system and filtration system. You know, uh, there are just so many uh, processes that are involved in the uh, kidney uh, system to go through all the different compounds and everything would take a long time. But again, it's interesting, uh, just Google, um, uh, if you're interested in this um, uh, articles on, you know, the function or physiology of, uh, of the, the kidneys to see, um, or the biochemistry of the, of the kidneys. It's amazing because, as I mentioned, they uh, excrete a variety of hormones that... Um, can respond to the levels of oxygen um, in the in the tissue. Uh, they uh, kidneys in, uh, release hormones that um, stimulate uh, the production of red blood cells in the bone marrow, and so uh, they're also involved, as said, in uh, producing calcitriol. Uh, the activated form of vitamin D that uh, promotes the intestinal absorption of calcium and also the reabsorption of phosphate. Um, and, um, and then uh, renin is another enzyme that, uh, um, that is uh, produced or hormone that's produced by uh, the, the kidneys that uh, regulates um, angiotensin and uh, aldosterone levels. And so these are involved, for example, in blood pressure regulation. And so... Um, the, um, the kidneys actually uh, don't seem to directly sense blood pressure, but they're involved in the long-term regulation of blood pressure. And um, this is because they uh, help uh, regulate sodium concentrations. Um, it's an amazing uh, system. Um, the, um, there's a whole lot of chemical messengers that make up the renin angiotensin system. And again, this whole system, you know, it ha this is a control system that is there within the, the kidneys, a chemical control system. And it just reeks of amazing design um, that um, regulates the kidney's absorption of sodium chloride thereby expanding the extra fluid uh, compartment and raising blood, uh, blood pressure. There's a whole mechanism that's involved there. Um, the kidneys are also involved in the acid-base uh, 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 regulation or homeostasis. In other words, the pH regulation of the blood. So the pH has to be maintained around a value of 7.4, pH 7.4. And this is very important. And so this is regulated by a couple of systems. You've got the lungs, the part of this system, uh, by regulating carbon dioxide content in the blood. And so that's the first line of defence when the body experiences an acid-base problem. Uh, so it, it, all the time the body is attempting to return the body pH to a value of 7.4 by controlling the respiratory rate, the rate at which we breathe. And so when the body's experiencing acidic conditions, it'll increase the respiratory rate, which in turn drives off um, carbon dioxide and, uh, then, and decreases the hydrogen ion concentration. And as a result, um, the pH then increases. And so we've got this uh, m uh, mechanism there. And of course, um, you know, that's why uh, plant-based foods that are more alkaline, plant-based foods and fruit, um, give us, um, you know, a greater capacity 
um, to uh, we don't get puffed as uh, quickly. We can carry more oxygen because the um, it, it alkalizes the blood pH, and um, therefore we can absorb more of the acidic waste products and so forth um, that are produced during metabolism of exercise. And uh, but of course the kidneys also. Uh, help maintain the acid base um, uh, homeostasis. And um, again, this is a whole separate um, um, uh, system where it involves the uh, regulation of bicarbonate um, and, and different transporters there. So again, we've got this whole um, and uh, uh, also, you know, potassium and chloride co co uh, transporters are involved. Um, again, it's an amazing um, system uh, that is involved in the kidneys there. The kidneys also regulate osmolality. Um, that is, the, they help maintain the water and salt levels in the body. Any significant rise in plasma osmolality is detected by the hypothalamus, which communicates directly with the posterior pituitary gland. And um, this gland causes an excretion of antidiuretic hormone, resulting in water reabsorption by the kidney and an increase in urine concentration. So here, again, we can see all other parts of the body, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, um, creating different hormones that interact with the biochemistry in the kidneys that help regulate and control. The human body is an amazingly chemical engineered design system. And um, it's just crazy to think that this system evolved. Of course, the main reason is, of course, you know, scientists study comparative physiology and try to look at, you know, the, in the, the kidneys in reptiles and birds and everything. But we need to. Um, Remember that Professor Clifford Ladd Prosser, Clifford Ladd Prosser, who was the originator of uh, uh, comparative uh, physiology, pointed out that it's not really so much a defined discipline, but a viewpoint or a philosophy. In other words, there's really no scientific evidence for evolution there. It's just a worldview. You've been listening to faith and science. Um, remember, if you want to re-listen to these programs, just um, uh, Google 3abnaustralia.org.au um, and click on the uh, radio listen button and look for faith and science. I'm Dr John Ashton. Have a great day. been listening to a production of 3ABN Australia Radio.